my nine year old daughter is launching her books. So how can we best, um, how best can we put this out uh, advertising on social media without throwing her on the deep end of social media? Right. So she, like we want to get stuff out there. But like as parents, we're a little bit hesitant. Obviously, like we talked about sharenting, like, oh, parents right. share too much about like their kids. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like you said earlier, like 11, 11 years of age is too late. Right. So when are they going to start learning about social, social media and start experimenting with that? Like, what's the good balance here? Yeah, well, I think already the fact that that Edna's asking the questions and digging through again that whole pro- proactive uh, approach is fantastic. Um, uh, I wrote an article. I um, actually wrote. Huh, I did not write an article. I was interviewed for an article for the the BBC on child influencers, talking about so your child wants to be uh, an influencer. What do you do? And um, I distinctly, and for me, Edna, this is kind of the same situation because anytime you're talking about putting your child out there uh, in this the social media realm and influencer realm, you have to be aware of the the negative Nellies, the the comments, uh, all the things that, that can come back that she may not be uh, able to handle. Um, so what I would suggest is um, one, to make sure that it's really her, that she's the one who wants to get those books out and, and not you, that you're not, uh, uh, but, but was it Shirley Temple or, or Brooke Shields' mom pushing them out into the, the, the spotlight, but that she really wants to do that. And then when, when you sit there and talk to her all about this, then that's great. Um, and if you do put things out in social media, again, you are her digital guardian. So you are the one uh, watching these accounts, um, making sure she does not give away personal information. In fact, anything that she says should not go out until you've reviewed it. Um, and then I think probably my my third and maybe the biggest tip, it would be not to share any personal photos of her. She doesn't need her image on social media. I would use a cartoon avatar of her, something that looks like her, uh, you know, a cute little nine-year-old girl um, cartoon and use that as her as her thing. So that way, you know, it will preserve her own personal identity. It will preserve her space. Um, so yes, she won't be as recognizable as Ryan, uh, you know, for fame and fortune, but she will have her intimacy preserved because at 18, Edna, if she changes her mind and says, mom, why did you do that? Why did you put all that stuff out there? Um, you know, it at least will be a cartoon image. That is also one of the things that is happening here in France is that by 18, if a child influencer wants all of that gone, it has to disappear. It's called the right to be forgotten, and it has to all go off the the, the digital wow. age. Yeah, I know, That's pretty exciting. cool. Huh? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Wow. Okay. Huh, that has huge implications because, like, for most, yes. like, stuff is on the internet and it never goes away. And so, having some regulation where you can even go back to the companies to say, no, you need to remove that all of this stuff is is yep. huge. Because it gives you a, a totally different level of control. Um, For sure. The, the thing, what I love about this is like showing examples. You described like non like identifying examples. So um, the lock picking lawyer, he doesn't need to show his face in order to do it. Like people uh, like him because of his content. Um, there's another um, Lego one, like Jang Hai. Like there are other influencers who do the same thing where they don't uh, publish everything. They just focus on the content that they really care about. And so if you're your, your channel is less about you and more about the content that you produce, then there isn't as much of a need to go and publish stuff publicly so that everyone can mm-hmm. like, it's not about your face and how famous you are. It's more about like what you're showing them and, and what your creativity is and what you produce. I think that might be a good uh, way of focusing them on something that potentially is gonna last a little bit longer than uh, their appearance as a youth. Uh, and so I think that that right. it's a good it's a good thing. It doesn't it doesn't hurt, and it means that they're investing longer term in the future. You feel more comfortable. Um, those types of things. Right. So um, and it already is uh, responding. Good points. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I I think that um, you know we've we've covered quite a bit here already. Uh, I think really. You, what you referred to earlier is kind of the the next step that I'm wondering about as well. So mm-hmm. if we were to, and so we've been advocating for some time that tech ab- abstinence is really hard, right? Like it's very difficult to say just like no tech whatsoever. 
because we live right. in such a connected world. And as a result, many parents don't have a choice. Like we have to expose them to screens. So we want them to do not just mm, like watching, like consuming, um, I call it like sedation. Um, you know, we, we do want to get closer to relating to what they do, but ultimately to creating. And the last part I was hoping that you could cover a little bit when it comes to screen time is, well, okay, so in this new world of creation, um, what does, like, what are we encouraging, what should we be encouraging them to create? How should we be encouraging them to, to share it and, and build these portfolios? Because it feels like we're building a, you're not just building a, like just some post that other people are going to like, you're building a portfolio uh, that you may right. use for a long time to go like, look at the cool right. things that I'm able to create. Um, so it becomes a part of their, their digital identity. And uh, it, it does kind of form a little of, of like who they, they perceive themselves as. And so I'm, I'm kind of thinking from, from that perspective, maybe you can give some insights from what you've seen or you've written mm -hmm. about. Yeah, for sure. I do think that it's really important to think about um, the, the digital identity uh, of your child and that digital footprint about what you are actually putting out there. And even starting as young as when you first learn, when a parent learns that they are uh, pregnant, parents are like, wow, this is so exciting. Let's post it on social media. And I'm always thinking, no, you know, be careful with that ultrasound. And it's, I've seen ultrasounds, they gave out all of the hospital information, the, the names, and I'm like, oh my goodness, you know. Um, and it's just like, just always keep thinking about, you know, what's private is private. Um, and I do think that with, with this idea of creation, which I think is really important, I think it's a great idea. Um, but one of the things that I've, that I've talked to uh, when I've spoken with Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts is about, you know, using social media for good. So using the, the digital world for good. And, and, and so those posts that you're putting, you know, it's not, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 I'm trying to think of what a 12 year old could do that would be really rambunctious and horrible. I don't know, it's not you kicking a bunch of cans off the freeway over ramp, you know, and taking off social media uh, pictures and posting about that. But it's more, you know, you doing um, something with your scouts, with your troop or, or that volunteer project that you did. I mean, it's really using social media for good. If you can amplify your voice and, and uh, help a project, I mean, this is what it's all about. I also uh, caution all kids and for parents to keep reminding their children, you're thinking this right now, but we don't know what you're going to say, you know, in five years, in 15 years. And I would probably say a last point is that for any of those creations um, that we are uh, encouraging our children to do, and I do, is, I do wholeheartedly hope that people are encouraging their children to create, is to one, realize you don't have to publish everything. Everything doesn't have to go out into the real world, even if you use um, online media to create something. And uh, the the second point, I think I just forgot my second point, <laughs> but it was just, I guess I remember. No, the second point and last point was that whatever your child has created, can could you imagine putting this in the middle of your town square or at this at the biggest thing of the in the mall? If that picture, post, image, book can be right there in the biggest mall that you have in your town or the biggest square in your village, wherever you are. And you would be proud saying, yay, that's my child. Well, then that's something different. Um, and if your child would be proud saying, yes, I want everybody to see that. And I think really having it out in the physical world changes it from when it's online. Because when it's online, people just hit post and click and then they see likes and followers and they just go, ooh, 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 this is so exciting. But imagine if you were standing in that center of town hall or in that mall and somebody walked by saying, ugh, that is horrible. Um, you know, how you, your child would feel. That this is the, like what you just mentioned, I think is, is extremely powerful. Um, and I hope it's sinking in for many of you who are watching live. Uh, I think like what you described is there's a kind of a connection. Um, it, it seems kind of weird, but it, it's, it's this connection between like creating stuff and disrupting and starting a movement and getting other people involved and mm -hmm. being proud of the messages that you're getting out. Like is the message, is the point of sharing so that you can become popular. I don't know. So you can be like, like this influencer. You're not going to be like that influencer because there's already that influencer out there. Right. So what is your message? And if it's a message, like you talked about like social media for good, 
I mean, this, this may be something that you'll stand up for for a long time. And if you can use it in an effective way, you essentially create, um, I say that like creativity has to start small, but creativity cannot exist without a community, right? The like, creativity in a vacuum, like is not, like you need that feedback in order to improve. And so you, you get that small little feedback, could be from the parents, like it's up to you how you wanna share it, but then later it moves into something bigger, like a community, and then like you get multiple communities yeah. together and then you've got a movement. And so yeah. like, it feels like this is where things like creativity is leading to. And that's where knowing social media and understanding like how does it work? How does it create this kind of viral effect? If you can harness that and start understanding from that perspective, you, it's very easy to, to use social media for very powerful, positive means as well, not just for the, the negative consumption. And so that's my goal for, for many of you. I hope, hope that makes sense. Um, oh, I got a new one from uh, Alice. It says, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what did she say? Let's take a look. Um, she says, my mom used to say, never write anything that you wouldn't want published in the newspaper. Your mom was right, Alice. It's the same today. <laughs> This is why I say take the tech out. And if we think about what our parents did and everything else, there's so many parallels, you know, that we really can do this. We really can. I like your mom, Alice. 